Don't Stop Believing is a bigger part of weddings worldwide than the annoying mother-in-law. And it also ruined Steve Perry's life. With Journey, Steve became a legend by merging the power of hard rock with the tenderness of soul. John Bon Jovi has called him The Voice. Yes, a simple name, but one that fits him very well. With Journey, Steve conquered the world. And then he just disappeared from the face of the earth. So today we're gonna dig into the secret history of how Steve Perry disappeared. Why was he kicked out of Journey? Is he really the Howard Hughes of rock and roll? And will he ever come back to the world of music? We've got a heartbreaking story full of death, disappearance, and redemption. We'll discover what happened to Steve Perry. But before we begin, please hit that thumbs up icon to show our channel some support. And subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new deep dive. Now come to me with open arms, or at least an open mind, as we go find out. How did Steve Perry join Journey? All his life, Steve wanted nothing more than to spend his life singing. When he was a kid, he heard a Sam Cooke song on the radio and was hooked. Now, I don't mean to bother you, but I'm in distress. But if it wasn't for a lucky break, Steve would have been working at McDonald's his whole life. So how did he join Journey? And did he really have to stab somebody in the back to get the gig? Okay, so before he was the frontman of Journey, Steve Perry was a musical journeyman. He spent his 20s hopping around California, performing with different bands, none of them very successful. You know, he was more like your cousin that's been living in mom's basement than a rock star. Years went by, and it seemed like he just didn't have the right stuff. And so Steve Perry decided to move home and quit music forever. Then he got a very important phone call from Walter Herbert, the manager of a struggling prog rock band. And that band turned out to be Journey. There was just one little tiny problem. That band already had a singer, a guy named Robert Fleischman. Now Robert was a talented singer with a howling voice like Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. And he helped write some incredible songs, like a tune called Wheel in the Sky. But his aggressive style didn't land with all the audiences, and Journey needed something a bit different. So Walter, that manager, cooked up a scheme. Steve would go on tour with the band, and they would tell Robert that he was a roadies Portuguese cousin to avoid suspicion. Then the time came to strike. During a sound check, Robert happened to be away from the microphone, long enough for Steve to jump in and perform. Not long after that, the band got the news. Robert was out and Steve Perry was in. Some might say the lesson to be learned here is to never give up on your dreams, blah, blah, blah. But more importantly, I think, if the roadie for your band brings along his Portuguese cousin, you better start polishing up your resume. Why did Journey quit? You might know the next part of Steve's Journey, when Journey quickly became one of the biggest bands in the world. Just how big were they? Well, they were getting over 600 pieces of fan mail a day, and there was even an arcade game based on the band. But it wouldn't be too long until Steve would vanish from the face of the earth. So how did one of music's biggest frontmen disappear? So Mr. Perry stepped away from Journey in 1984 to record a solo album, Street Talk. I've seen you can it did enjoy a bit of success, and Steve was ready to rejoin Journey. But then his mother became ill, and he began to travel back and forth to help take care of her. This didn't mesh well with Journey's balls-to-the-wall schedule of recording and touring and repeat. Next, Steve's mom passed. He said, quote, I thought I had a pretty good heart, but a heart isn't really complete until it's completely broken. The band then went on hiatus, and in 1996, they reunited with the Trial by Fire album. They were gearing up for a massive tour to support the record when tragedy struck. 
Steve Perry was hiking in Hawaii when he injured his hip. But what's worse was he found out he had a degenerative bone condition and would have to get a hip replacement if he wanted full movement. Now the timing couldn't have been worse. Steve was reluctant to rush into surgery and wanted to postpone the tour. But his band members, who were kind of desperate for the cash, wanted him to go ahead and get it over with. Months went by, and then a year. 18 months later, the band gave Steve an ultimatum. Get the hip replacement, or he would be out of the band. Now, what happens next kind of depends on who you ask, or how you look at it. Steve either quit, or got the boot. But no matter how you look at it, one of the biggest bands in the world was now missing its strongest weapon. And so, the lead singer of Journey was now Steve Algeri. And no offense, but he's kind of a weaker Steve Perry. And with that, Steve Perry was no longer in Journey, or the public eye. He disappeared completely, leaving music behind. What happened to Steve Perry? So what happened to The Voice in the years after his departure from Journey? And how did Journey attempt to replace him? So Steve's replacement, Steve Algeri, or as the band probably called him, New Steve, played with Journey for nine years. But then his voice began to fail, and he got in some hot water for allegedly using pre-recorded backing tracks. The band went through some more vocalists, including singers from Journey tribute bands. You know, the guys whose whole career was to imitate Steve Perry. In 2007, they found Arnel Pineda, a Filipino singer in a cover band on YouTube. And Arnel has been the Steve replacement ever since. So what was Steve up to? Not very much. His to-do list basically looked like this. Ride motorcycle and a bunch of question marks. Despite being one of the best frontmen in the world, Steve had never been quite like other rock stars. He was a quiet guy and stayed away from serious relationships. His parents had gone through a terrible divorce when he was growing up, and he'd also seen close friends have similar experiences. He did have one serious relationship with Sherry Swafford. He and Sherry had gotten along very well, and he wrote his solo hit, Oh Sherry, about her. And she was even featured in that, and some other music videos. But the spark had never been quite strong enough, and his busy touring schedules put a quiet end to the couple. After Sherry, Steve was too scared to seriously connect with anybody. He kind of floated around, only a bit lonely on the fringes of the world he once ruled. He was in self-imposed isolation, and he had thrown away the key. Years would pass, until everything changed in 2011. A Tragic Love Story In 2011, Perry was visiting his friend on the set of a movie she was working on about women and breast cancer. And there happened to be some real cancer patients acting as extras on set. And one of those was named Kelly. And Kelly caught Steve's eye. He asked his friend for her email. And she was shocked because Steve had become a very shy and quiet person who was known to not really care about dating. So she said, sure, and gave him the email. But she had to mention a pretty sad fact, that her cancer had come back, and she was now fighting for her life again. But Steve Perry did not care. He reached out to Kelly, and two weeks later, he took her out to dinner. The pair just hit it off, and they were inseparable after that. It seemed Steve had finally found love. Kelly helped bring him out of isolation, and she made him promise that if anything ever happened to her, he would not retreat back into solitude. He agreed, not really believing anything could ever happen to her. But while the love was absolutely real, there was of course limits to it. And just a year later, in 2012, Kelly Nash passed away at the age of 40. Steve was crushed, but he never forgot that promise he made her. Is Steve Perry returning to music? Over the previous decades, Steve had become kind of, how should I say this, a weird guy. He floated around the music industry, always watching from the outside. 
He became a huge fan of the band Eels and went to their shows for five years. But the members, who weren't huge fans of Journey, never invited Steve Perry backstage. It then took a mutual friend's introduction for Steve to actually meet the band he was so fond of. Steve became friends with the band and began to play croquet with Eels. Huh, I never thought I would say that sentence. Eventually, he began to show up at their rehearsals. I mean, who's gonna tell Steve Perry no? After Kelly died, Steve did become withdrawn for a time. But two years later, he showed up once again to an Eels rehearsal with his own microphone. He performed with Eels for the first time in years because he had to keep his promise to Kelly. It doesn't seem like Steve is going to rejoin Journey. When the band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Steve didn't perform. It was his clone, Arnell Pineda. Up there on stage, getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, singing Don't Stop Believing. But Steve didn't have a problem with that. He wasn't in that band anymore. And just to mention, I think Arnell does an incredible job, but no one is Steve Perry. And so, in 2018, Steve released another solo album called Traces, this time dedicated to Kelly. You left with me and, and he also pops up every now and again to record or collaborate. If you ever listened to Dolly Parton's last album, he sang some backing vocals on it. So yes, Steve may never be part of Journey again, but hey, I'm not gonna stop believing. But what I will do is to continue to listen to Steve Perry's music. All right, that's enough of me. Now we want to hear from you. Who do you think was the best vocalist for Journey? Does Arnell Pineda do the material justice? Or is he simply a clone? Finally, have you heard any of Steve's solo stuff? Get in the comments and tell us all things Steve Perry. If you enjoyed our journey today, please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what happened.